in an SHTF situation, what is your plan? Are you going to bug out or are you going to bunker in? And that's one of the questions that a lot of people have had over the years. And it really depends on your situation, on your environment, where you live. Uh, one thing that I have said and I support is that if you can bunker in, it's best. <laughs> you know, if you're out on the road, you're a refugee. And we've had a video, we talked about that a while back. But we're going to talk specifically about bunkering in. Now, bugging out should be in your plan. And we'll talk a little bit about that at the end of the video. But bunkering in, to me, it's your safe haven, it's what you're familiar with, it's where your supplies are. And being able to stay in one spot to ride out, you know, most situations uh, is really smart. But, you know, if you live in an urban area where there's a lot of rioting and looting going on, that may not be an option. So first off is, you know, we're very familiar with where we live. I mean, we know a lot of the roads coming in and out, but are you really familiar? Have you looked at it from the eye of possible an SHTF situation? Uh, there's a lot of different ways in, that people live. They a lot live in urban, suburban, neighborhoods. They live in rural or semi-rural, which we live in kind of a semi-rural area and we're only about 10 minutes from the city. So it's really important for us to have some idea of how our area is laid out, how the property's laid out, you know, where roads that we can take, all the shortcuts. Now, a lot of you guys know your shortcuts. Some guys have just moved into the area and it's important to go through and those roads that you've just really never been down because you haven't had a reason to, this gives you a good reason. Check out all your exits. Uh, ways to get out, ways to move. Also, is it accessible uh, in a situation? Is there a major freeway near you? Uh, of course, is there a city near you? A lot of times, you know, in a crisis situation, people migrate, <laughs> they move and they look and they're looking for supplies, they're looking for a place to stay. And so that leads us to the first thing. You know, a lot of people will say that, you know, if you're gonna bunker in, that to make your place look like it's abandoned. Uh, you know, and that is a smart move in certain thought processes. But really, when you think about it, what are people that are migrating out of a city or, or getting, you know, on the bug out themselves? What are they going to be looking for? You know, for me personally, if I was bugging out, I would be looking for a place that was abandoned. So I could, you know, kind of bunker in <laughs> there for a little while anyway, maybe a, a shelter for the night as I'm moving, whatever the possibility. Uh, also, you might have looters that want to go into a house that's empty and they're looking for supplies. Maybe there's something left. Maybe there's something that they can use. You know, I think a lot of that has to do with where you live and what the possibilities are that you may have looters. Now, another big thing is to look at your property, look at your yard, look at your neighborhood. Uh, see where you have vulnerabilities. Uh, is there a place, uh, especially like fence lines or brush piles or a lot of trees? Is there somewhere where somebody could hide behind uh, that would be necessarily like an oppressor coming into your place, an aggressor? Is it going to be easy to defend? Are, are those brush piles and trees and your fence line, is it away from the house? And, you know, is the house going to be defendable? And I think right now is the time to kind of take a look and see how things line up. Uh, you know, having a, a tree line right there next to your house that's pretty thick brush can be a problem. People can come through there, they can get right up to your house before you even know it. And so I think having a kind of a clear view around your property uh, could really save your life and, uh, you know, give you fair warning in case, you know, you're under some kind of attack. And another thing is, is repairing things. Go ahead now, uh, repair that fence, you know, repair the drive, repair whatever you have, because in an SHTF situation, you may not have the resources to be able to do any kind of repairs. You know, if you have barbed wire fences, get them fixed. You know, make sure that your windows latch and uh, that people can't necessarily come through. Now, one thing that you may need to consider is there may be zoning restrictions. Your community may have um, a homeowners association or something like that that restricts you from doing a lot. And so, you know, you need to check with them first before you start making some kind of adjustments. And really this is, I'm trying to be very practical with this because, you know, one thing that's really important is in case you need to get first responders to you. Um, you know, in an SHTF situation, it doesn't mean that we've gone back to the Stone Age. 
you know, one of the things that Fafal said in the coming economic collapse that happened in Argentina was the police won't be there to protect you, but they'll be there to arrest you. And so there are some first responder or emergency crews that may be out that may be able to get to you. So you need to make sure that you have access to your property as well, uh, just in case, you know, a child is injured and uh, you need to get care to them pretty quickly. Now, another big thing is situational awareness, being aware when things start to go south, you know, keeping an eye out. If you see unusual people around, you know, keep an eye on them. Just make note. You don't have to be paranoid, but it's important to be able to have that situational awareness, you know, walking out to your car. Uh, you know, somebody could, you know, ambush you. Uh, I know in the mornings when I'm leaving and I'm going to the shop and I'm walking down the driveway and we have cars parked and I'm always cognizant that there could be somebody around those cars hiding. Not paranoid, I just have, I'm just aware of it. And I always carry a really hot cup of coffee with me as I'm walking. <laughs> so hopefully I can douse them and then draw my firearm. That's in an everyday situation because you'd be surprised at how many crimes happen, you know, in the early morning. But in an SHTF situation, when people are desperate, uh, an ambush is definitely something that you need to be careful of. Now, one thing to consider, whether you make your house look abandoned or you want to make sure that it looks like people are living there. Uh, you know, one of the things you definitely don't want to do is have high priced items or things that people want out for them to see. You know, it may be shovels and tools. You don't want them a chainsaw. You want to make sure that somebody's not observing you and they're watching you bring guns in and out and ammunition, things like that. Things that could be valuable in an SHTF situation. So make sure that you kind of keep that on the down low, be discreet, uh, and you know, things will go a lot better. Now, of course, one thing that we tend to all kind of think about uh, in a survival situation is food, water, heat, those basic necessities. So now is a great time to sit down and inventory your food stocks, your food supplies. Guys, I recommend that anybody have at least a three month supply of food and you build that slowly. Uh, but you can do it at the grocery store. You can pick up dried beans and rice. And, uh, you know, if you want to keep that long term, you're going to need to be able to put them in Mylar bags and to store them. But just, you know, rotating those things out, getting those things that you typically eat, you know, that you can store, keep those on hand and rotate them out. And sometimes in an SHTF situation, you may have to put together things that you normally might not do. Like when I was in middle school and they'd put corn with pizza. <laughs> but make sure you have a, some kind of water source, uh, whether it's a creek, a pond. I mean, there are water sources around, but you need to be able to filter that water and to treat that water. Boiling water is a great way to do it, but a lot of times it can be dirty. Uh, one thing that we have is a, a big Berkey. In fact, we drink all of our drinking water. We use the big Berkey. We have extra filters. Uh, it will filter out 3000 gallons of water. Uh, and then, you know, per filter. And so we have quite a bit of water that we can filter through. But having a good water source is important. A few years ago, I built one of the rain catchment systems. Uh, and I was able, we're able to harvest rainwater. It's good and fresh water, but you still want to clean it and make sure that, you know, it's good to drink. Now, there are some zoning laws and even some laws in some cities that restrict rainwater catchments and so you need to check your laws but having a way to get that water guys three days without water and you know you start to go into dehydration so water is a very important thing storing up water is fine but having a renewable source of good fresh clean drinking water is critical and you know you need at least one gallon per person per day also during the winter time what are your heat sources we can go sometimes without power but what if it's in the middle of winter? What are you gonna do to be able to keep heat and keep your family warm? Uh, you know, for us, we have a wood stove. A lot of you have gas. Do you have plenty of gas? Do you keep check on that to make sure that they top that off and keep it full? Whether it's propane, natural gas should be safe as far as it come, continuing to come in, but that could be interrupted. Uh, in the summertime, of course, it's really hot. You know, it can get very hot, especially in a house that's closed up. And so, and opening your windows makes you somewhat vulnerable to someone coming through. 
so you have to kind of weigh these things out. Think about these things ahead of time. And guys, that's really the whole purpose of this video is to get you to thinking ahead so you'll be ready in case anything happens. Which leads us to power. Uh, if you have, you know, your refrigerator has food, you need to go ahead. If something goes wrong with the power, you need to go ahead and start eating that food. But here's the real kicker is how are you gonna cook it? And you know, a lot of us have grills, but how long will they last? and being able to have some kind of way to cook maybe with wood in a stove. Now we've done some brick stoves and rocket stoves and those things are great. There's a lot of options out there, but be careful with wood fire because you don't want to breathe in a lot of that smoke because it can really hurt your health. And of course, along with food is food prep. Do you have the items that you need? Do you have a can opener? Not an electric can opener, but a regular manual can opener. Those things could be very valuable. Another thing about having food storage, a lot of times people will load up on grains and stuff like that. Do you have the necessary means? Do you have a grinder to be able to grind that wheat? And then once you grind it, do you know how to prepare it, how to cook, how to bake bread, how to do the things that you need to do with wheat? Rice, just plain rice, after a while, it gets very bland. And if you're not careful, you will completely lose your appetite. Beans, having salt, having you know, flavors, being able to, to season that. Uh, you know, all of these things come into play when we're you know, not able just to run to the grocery store and we've got to improvise to survive. Another thing is, is make sure that your vehicles are topped off with gas. Don't ever get below half a tank. Keep gas in your vehicle. It's really easy to stop, fill it up, and just move on. And so to me, that is a very important thing. We've, uh, on the past, had gas shortages, uh, whether it was a hurricane that had come through and damaged a lot of the refineries, you know, or just the prices had gone up or there was some kind of problem. And in an SHTF situation, that could easily stop. So having enough fuel and then conserving that fuel. Just like all the other things, cons conservation is important. You know, you can get water out of your water heater. I think a lot of times it'll 40 gallon, <laughs> 40 gallons of water, this potable water, you can drink it. But the problem is, is you need to conserve it, you need to take care of it. Uh, even the water in your tank, in your toilet, the tank on the back, not the bowl, but the tank, that water is, you know, can be treated, it can be drank, it can be used for cleaning and things like that. Now, a big one is basic medical. And first off, I highly recommend everyone to go at least to the Red Cross and get CPR training and some other classes to where you can do just basic first aid. But there are some really good classes taught all over the country for trauma. And uh, I know I've gone to a Skinny Medics class. It's really excellent. It's a one day class. I mean, you learn all kind of stuff about trauma. And of course, Skinny Medic is a paramedic and he has, and in fact, he's an instructor. And so there's a lot of information, but there are a lot of classes out there and around uh, for you to be able to get that information. And guys, it's not black magic. It's really pretty simple, but it's simple if you have some basic knowledge. And if you don't, it can be tough. And there are so many different trauma kits, first aid kits. You know, you are the first responder, so you need to be ready. And if you're on medications, if there's any way that you can get a supply that lasts longer than just the prescription, usually it's a month, and so, you know, that could run out. And if it's a critical medication, you know, you definitely need to talk to your doctor, see if they will be willing to give you just a little bit of an edge. Uh, and then two, knowing alternate ways to treat people. Uh, there are a lot of there's a lot of alternative medicine ideas out there and things that you can learn and uh, we've used quite a few ourselves over the years my wife's an rn and she knows quite a bit about you know taking care of people <laughs> and so you know with that she still studies alternative medicines but you need to get the information you need to study and that leads us to one thing as well is having a library you know, having some medical books to be able to refer to. That'll give you some peace of mind, it'll give you some confidence. And then also just books on prepping, things, basic things that you need to know. You know, how to tie different knots and all the different, how to read a compass, you know, just basic things, but have them on hand, build a library, because you may not be able to get to your laptop, and even if you can, you may not have Wi-Fi. And so having those things in a hard copy 
uh, to me is just smart. One thing that we do is we keep maps, road maps, in every vehicle. And that way, in case you know our GPS goes or we have some kind of problem, we've got a road map. And a while back, I ended up having to use my road map because I was way out in the middle of nowhere and I needed to be able to get direction. And that map really made the difference for me getting home. Now, last but not least, you definitely need to have some kind of bug out plan. And with that, you need supplies. And a bug out bag is super important. You can put it together. You can have it stored in one place. You know where they are. Each of my family members have a bug out bag. And each one actually keeps them in their trunk or over their vehicle. And so that way, it's always with them. They know where it is. And situations can happen. They have that bag. But in a life and death situation, that bag could mean everything. And so make sure that you have a good, well-supplied bag. There's a ton of videos. We've done a number of videos on bug out bags, go bags, survival bags. And so have those things ready to go, have them updated. Don't rob from it to use it for something else and lay it aside and not put it in your bag because that's a big danger. And something I did for years until I finally just made my bag and I left it alone. But the big thing is, is you need an exit plan need to have ideas on how you can get out of your home if you have to. And one problem is if you're being raided by, you know, some kind of roving gang or something, you may not be able to get to your vehicle. You may have to hoof it on foot and you need to have ways to get away from your home if you need to. Um, and so that's another thing about being familiar with your property, knowing the exit points, knowing where you're going. If you're going through a patch of woods, what's on the other side? You know, where can you get away? How can you possibly come back maybe and get your vehicle? But, you know, there's so many different situations. There's no way to say this is the way you do it. But if you're prepared, you're planned, you have a know the area that you live in, you're very familiar with it, and you've already thought these things ahead, it's going to give you a lot of peace of mind, but it also will help you in a survival situation. And two, one big thing is if you're getting on the freeway and the roads, uh, I'm going to tell you guys, the roads and the freeways, if it is a really critical survival situation, uh, they'll probably be blocked or the traffic will be at a dead stop. And so that is one thing about bugging out that can really be a problem and an issue. And so having road maps to be able to navigate on smaller roads and country roads, roads around certain things could be vital if your Wi-Fi is out if your GPS is out. Guys, I know I've put out a lot for you to think about, but the main thing is, is to start taking stock of where you live, think about the supplies you have, take care of those things now. Do the repairs around the house, make sure that your cars are in good working order, make sure that you have gas, make sure you have a way to heat, make sure you have a way to cook food, have that food ready. You know, we live in a technology paradise in some ways. But if that ever goes down, it could really turn into hell. And so it's very important to be prepared, thinking ahead, making a plan. One of the things I read years ago in Soldier of Fortune magazine was if you can survive the first 72 hours of any crisis, your chances of survival skyrocket. And guys, if you're serious about prepping and survival, check out Survival Dispatch Insider. It is the best resource on the web for survival and prepping. Uh, there's a lot of world-renowned contributors on there. We upload one video a week that's exclusive to The Insider, and I'll have a link down below in the description. It's well worth checking out. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Now, one of the things You know, recently, if one of your family members is injured and they do...